muting strip and what I'll do with this it mutes off the outer two strings. Yeah. So we just hear the centre string and we use this for setting the scale and the it's so much quicker if we use it to use the um to list off the centre part of the piano. Okay. temperament scales are listed off with a muting strip and uh, I'll be checking the pitch using a tuning fork. It's set to C equals 523 .3, which was tested at 20 degrees centigrade to get the right tuning pitch. Now the piano, the middle C is um, at the correct pitch, I'll start setting the temperament scale, I'll start middle C then to F. And the fifths are always tuned very slightly narrow um, to make the equal temperament.
sounds much more crisp um, or tight. It sounds, if a note with the unisons in tune sounds tight or crisp. Move to the F sharp, which is the first tri chord. Just tune above the note and then let the, uh, as you strike the note, tune, ease it downwards, and then that's like setting the pins. See how much tighter that sounds. sound in tune. Now here's an example of falseness in the note. As you get towards the break, which is the gap where the strut of the frame is, it's all, nearly always around this part of the piano, you would get falseness. There's nothing much you can do about it, nearly all pianos have this. So I've muted off with a pap wedge the, the right hand two strings of C sharp 53, and I'll play it loudly and it's beating. It's just the one string on its own, so there's not much we can do to make that sound better. So we just, what we do is just try and tune it to minimise that, that false beating. Get the wedge out. So the two strings next to each other are playing. there that's from the false note but the upper partials are all or mostly together we work a little bit better because I'm fussy and I've managed to blur out the um, the false note so it's slightly um, it's very difficult to how you do that it's just generally um, tuning it so you don't hear the force and beat. I'm just trying to get it just right. It's almost a bit like using the force, really. I'm coming to the break where the strut is. And as you can see, I've tuned the part that I used with the listing felt. And I'm you know, using these, these things. This is a paps wedge. It looks like a clothes peg or a, chopstick. a beginner's chopstick. Yeah, and if you can always imagine, if you see people in a Chinese restaurant using these to eat their meal, you can guarantee they're piano tuners. Um, so I use one wedge, it's advisable if you're starting out tuning to use two wedges, one for each octave, but I like to check the lower unison as I'm tuning, just to see if it stayed where it is, I might have forgotten to set the pin or something and then I've been distracted. So it's always worthwhile to, if you're tuning and starting off using two wedges. But I'm coming to the break now. Uh, this is where you get falseness, it's because of the structure of the piano. and it's often in the left hand string of the trichord. This one isn't too bad actually on the break. So I'm doing as I did before, tuning up to check the fifth, fourth, and then I listen to the left hand and centre string. firmly to set the pin, make sure it stays where we want it to be. As you go further up the treble you need to strike the string more often because there's more decay on the string so to keep the tone going. Do you always check the middle part first before the bass and the treble? You will start with the I middle. I start with middle C and the temperament scope because that's the uh, basis of the whole tuning. Is the temperament. Once that's correct, the rest of the piano will be right. Because if the like a the fifths are slightly narrow and they they will sound more out of tune as you go up the piano. So you don't want them too out of tune. 
you don't put them wrong at the bottom of the, in, the, in the temperament mm. scale, otherwise it would sound dreadful up here. So we, we always check, because then we work up to the treble, and then once that's all done, we then do the bass, and the bass is, doesn't, it generally doesn't take as long as the treble because there are less strings per note, and there's very rarely any problems with falseness down at the uh, bass end. You might get inharmonicity on a small upright, or even a baby grand because of short string length in the bass. But generally, it's uh, easier to tune the bass than it is the treble. Okay. Because there's less to do. Some slight inharmonicity in that G because it's so close to the break, but that's just, uh, that sounds pretty tight. Let's come out to the <clears throat> top end of the treble. I'm hammering at them quite um, quickly to get the uh, sustain so you can hear the note. It's important to set the pins more than ever up, up at this end of the piano because it has more scope for movement because there's a shorter string length. The treble's all done and I'm um, about to start doing the bass which is a lot easier than the treble. There are less strings, uh, longer string length. Um, and generally easier. I'm using a rubber wedge to wedge off the strings. Um, if I use a paps wedge, the wedge will just bring straight out the piano and I'll be chasing around after it. So, just as before, mm -hmm. I'll be tuning the right hand string. I'll be doing two notes at once. It saves fiddling around with the wedge. So I'll be doing... You'll get this in small pianos in the bass because of short string length. As, as I said earlier, you have to do your best with it. As long as the uh, fundamental is in perfect unison, there's not much we can do about the upper partials. Let's finish the bi-chords now. So on the, la the home stretch, okay. the single strings. So we just... Uh, tune now, so I'll just test it, play a few uh, chords. That's and lovely. Then and then what we do before we finish, we put it all back together. <laughs>